I got a C in my first sack. Ah! <laughs> hey guys, I'm Lisa, and as you know, it is Monday after school, which means it's a, another fortnight where I can give you some VC English specific tips and just VC life in general. And today we're going to be talking about something that I'm pretty sure. 99% of you guys will experience, and that is feeling disappointed about a certain SAC mark. So stay tuned until the end of the video because I've got a new, very exciting project regarding English specific online tutorials, and I would love to invite you guys to it. So stay tuned. No matter what subject it is, there will probably be one SAC throughout the year at the very least where you just freak out and just think, oh my gosh, it is so badly in that sack and I am screwed for the rest of the year. What am I going to say to that? Of course, you probably know it already. I am going to reassure you. I'm not going to reassure you just because I'm trying to make you feel better, but seriously, take the advice from me. Yes, your sacks are important, but don't get down on just this one sack or even a couple of sacks or three sacks where you just didn't do as well as you hoped you did. If you guys watched a previous video of a QA and a I did with some of my lovely tutors, Jared, one of the tutors in this video, actually commented on how he actually didn't get the best marks in English in the first part of the year. But you know what? He got a 49 in English at the end of the day. And I don't know about you, but 49 in English is Pretty exceptional and I'm pretty sure a lot of us would not mind a sweet 49 in English. But you guys must be thinking, how can it be the case that he got B's and still got a 49 at the end of the year? I, it just, it doesn't comprehend, right? You have to know that there are so many factors that go into SAC marks and then so many factors contributing to your final mark at the end of the year. Just remember, if you didn't know already, your SAC marks are moderated. So moderated just means double checking between teacher and teacher to make sure that their markings are pretty much equivalent so that if one teacher sees student A's essay, they don't think, oh my gosh, this is an A, and then student A's essay gets marked by a different teacher and they give it a B. Okay, because that's not really matching up. So they will always try to set particular boundaries and rules to standardize it so that different teachers will give a very similar mark to that particular student no matter what. So that any teacher, no matter how they mark generally, will ensure that they mark just like the other teachers so that everyone's on par with each other and it's an even playing field for all the students. So you don't just get moderated in school, but then schools are moderated against each other. And this is what your GAT is for later on in the year. And when the GAT comes, I am definitely going to talk to you guys a little bit about that because it is definitely something that's very important to yourself and also your school. Not only do you get moderated at an individual level, but you then get moderated at a group level. All of these factors really do influence on your eventual SAC mark. And so just saying to yourself, oh my gosh, I've got to see, screw it. I am just done for English for the rest of the year. I'm just done with chemistry. It's definitely going to be my bottom two. Guys, don't think that there's so much room for improvement and there's so much you can do. And Jared is just a fantastic example of that. You can bounce back from these type of marks and just use them as a way to think, you know what? All right, I didn't do that well in this particular site, but let's see what I can improve on next time and just keep improving and improving until you get to the point where you're really confident with yourself by the end of the year. I always tell my students, don't look at your SAC marks as the be all and end all of your study score. You really just don't know. I think a better way of looking at it is to obviously try your best, but see it as an indication of how you're going in that particular subject. So for example, if you get an A for a SAC that's based on chapter one, and then you get a B for a SAC that's based on chapter 12, use it as a way of thinking, okay, you know what? Chapter one, I'm pretty good at that, but chapter 12, there's obviously room for me to improve and use that to your advantage. To be honest, I think it's better for you not to just be getting A pluses all throughout the year and just be like, oh, you know, I'm top sh I'm awesome, give it to me, you know, whatever. And not see that there's actually missing gaps in your knowledge or not see that there is actually a next step you could go for and potentially even just getting so cocky and egotistical that you don't work any harder for it. Because if you don't do that, then everyone else, those people who got those C's and those B's at the start of the year, they will catch up. Trust me, I have seen it happen. So that's just the general message to you guys. Please don't look at your sacks and just think, oh my gosh, I have failed it. I'm gonna fail the year. Look at them as messages to you in what you can improve. Improve on it so that the next sack that comes, you will be getting a B instead of a C or an A instead of a B. 
Okay, since we're talking about SAC marks and potentially not doing so well and wanting to improve, I'm actually starting a new, very exciting project that I would love to welcome you guys to. Starting from term two, I would really like to conduct online tutoring for one hour each week on Saturdays at 2.45 to 3.45 p.m. Very specific, I know, because I know that a lot of you out there cannot afford particular tutors or a lot of you also live in the outskirts of Melbourne and maybe you can't find tutors in your area or maybe you're just a really busy person and to find time to travel to a tutor to come back and all of that can take up your day. So basically each lesson is $10 for the hour and I'm going to be doing a term of this and it's going to be online. Basically it will be like a group of us coming together and I'll go through a certain topic each week. So for the first session I would really like to go through a language analysis article because I know that for many of you out there term two is basically language analysis. So I want to do that and then I also want to record these videos as well so if you can't actually make that certain time that that's absolutely fine. They'll be saved and placed online for you so you can still access them at any time that you're free. I think this is just going to be a really great way for me to be able to interact with you guys and just to provide more because doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring, I absolutely love it and it's fantastic. But the only thing is that there's only so many people I can tutor at that one time. So doing this online really opens up the possibilities and I would love to have you guys there to experience it together and obviously to learn English as well. So if you're keen, I'll pop the link there for you and by the time this video is released, I'm sure that I'll have the page with all the details for you guys so that you can sign up. Please have a look. I would love to see the type of interest that this could potentially generate. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Honestly, if someone had told me the same piece of information when I was in year 12, I would have thought, oh, come on, please. Like, I know I need to do well. There's no other way. But being in this field, tutoring for so many years, seeing so many students, talking to so many tutors, there's a reason why I'm giving you this particular advice. And it might not sound like instinctual, but it is definitely true. So please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already to join our VC Study Guys family here on YouTube. And comment below if you want to see your question answered next time. Also, to all of those people out there who have already submitted their questions to me, don't worry, I have collected all of them. I've got a Word document with all your questions and I absolutely plan on answering all of them. It's just a matter of time. So keep your eye out for it, all right? I'll see you guys in a fortnight, Monday after school. Bye. When you first start studying a text, my recommendation is to have an A4 page, then start to create a mind map with everything that you know. That will help you understand